Exploring the rich tapestry of the Silk Road. Eight commodities that wove ancient connections. The Silk Road, a dynamic trade network weaving through central Eurasia for centuries, wasn't a solitary path but a bustling conduit that connected diverse cultures. Guided by camel and horseback, this vibrant route witnessed the exchange of not just exotic commodities, but also the transfer of knowledge, technology, medicine, and religious beliefs profoundly influencing ancient civilizations. Coined in 1877 by German geographer Ferdinand Freiherr von Richthofen, the term Silk Road initially highlighted the flourishing silk trade between the Chinese Han Empire, 206 BC to 220 AD, and Rome. However, contemporary scholars acknowledge that the Silk Road, or rather Silk Roads, continued fostering cross-continental trade until the 17th and 18th centuries, when maritime trade supplanted overland caravans. Delving into this historical treasure trove, here are eight pivotal commodities that fueled centuries of cultural exchange along the Silk Road. Silk, unveiling the versatility and legacy of the Silk Road. The Silk Road earned its name with good reason. Originating in China around 3000 BCE, silk emerged as the perfect commodity for overland trade expeditions, covering vast Xinwen, a historian specializing in medieval China and Inner Asia at Princeton University, sheds light on the significance of silk in the journeys of merchant and diplomatic caravans. Wen, who is set to release a forthcoming book titled The King's Road, Diplomatic Travelers and the Making of the Silk Road in Eastern Eurasia, 850 to 1000, explains, with limited carrying capacity, travelers opted for the most valuable and lightweight goods. Silk perfectly embodied these criteria. It was not only high in value, but also exceptionally versatile. Chinese silk held a special allure for the Roman elite, who considered it a luxurious thin textile. Subsequently, when silk-making technology reached the Mediterranean, skilled artisans in Damascus innovated the reversible woven silk textile, now known as damask. However, silk's role extended beyond mere attire as one. In Buddhist cultures, it found use in crafting ritual banners and as a canvas for paintings. In the influential Silk Road settlement of Turfan in eastern China, silk even served as a form of currency, according to historian Valerie Hansen. During the Tang Dynasty, 618 to 907 AD, Tal, silk took on the additional role of being collected as a form of taxation. The multifaceted utility of silk illustrates its central role in the vibrant tapestry of cultures and commerce along the historic Silk Road. Horses. The pivotal role of horses in ancient trade and elite. Around 3700 BC, Do, the vast steppes of Central Asia witnessed a significant development, the domestication of horses. This pivotal moment in history marked the beginning of a transformative era as horses became instrumental in the lives of nomadic tribes. These tribes, spanning territories alongside China, India, Persia, and the Mediterranean, utilized horses for hunting and raiding. As agrarian societies embraced the horse, recognizing its value in transport, cultivation, and cavalry, a profound shift occurred that the Silk Road, a network of trade routes connecting the East and West, played a crucial role in the exchange of goods and ideas. Among the enduring and significant trade relationships on the Silk Road was the silk for horse trade. Chinese merchants and officials engaged into this trade, offering bolts of prized silk in exchange for well-bred horses from the Mongolian steppes and the Tibetan plateau. The symbiotic nature of this exchange was evident as nomadic elites highly valued silk, either for the status it bestowed or for the additional goods it could procure. When an expert in the field highlights the unique role of horses as the ultimate high-value, low-weight commodity on the Silk Road. Horses were not merely a means of transportation. They became a distinctive luxury item, coveted by the elite across the Eurasian world. Unsurprisingly, historical relics bear witness to the profound impact of horses. The famed tomb of the Chinese emperor Qin Shi Huang, 259 to 210 BCC, serves as a testament within its confines alongside the renowned 8,000 terracotta warriors are lifelike statues depicting 520 chariot horses and 150 cavalry horses. These intricate statues reflect not only the practical significance of horses, but also their elevated status as revered symbols of power and prestige in ancient societies. Paper's Transcontinental Voyage, Tracing Paper's Global Journey Along the Silk Road 
paper, a remarkable invention originating in China during the second century AC Zhou, embarked on a transformative journey across Asia, marking its profound impact on the dissemination of knowledge and cultural exchange. The historical narrative unfolds as paper traverses the Silk Road, transcending geographical boundaries and fostering intellectual connections. In the year 751, the Islamic world encountered paper during the clash between Arab forces and the Tang Dynasty at the Battle of Tolas. This encounter paved the way for the introduction of papermaking in Baghdad by the visionary Caliph Harun al-Rashid. The subsequent establishment of a paper mill in Baghdad became a pivotal point, radiating the practice of papermaking to Egypt, North Africa, and Spain. It was in the 12th and 13th centuries that paper finally found its way to Europe, as chronicled by Millward. The Silk Road, a legendary trade route connecting the East and West, became a conduit for the migration of paper and ideas alike. Travelers along this ancient route utilized paper documents as passports, facilitating their journey through nomadic lands and providing respite at caravanseries nestled in Silk Road oases. However, the most remarkable role of a paper on the Silk Road was its incorporation into texts and books, serving as a vessel for the transmission of entirely new systems of thought, particularly in the realm of religion. When an expert on the subject, underscores the intriguing correlation between the prevalence of paper in China and the simultaneous spread of Buddhism. This connection is mirrored in the dissemination of other belief systems like Manichaeism and Zoroastrianism. The Silk Road, therefore, emerges as a vital conduit for the exchange of diverse ideas and cultural interactions, with paper playing a pivotal role in this intellectual tapestry. In essence, the journey of paper from its Chinese inception to the Silk Road's intellectual highway is a testament to its profound influence on the global exchange of knowledge, ideas, and cultural diversity. Spice Journey on the Silk Road, Navigating Culinary Treasures Through Ancient Roots In the realms of East and South Asia, spices such as cinnamon, hailing from Sri Lanka and kasha rooted in China, held a magnetic allure, making them sought-after commodities in the ancient world of trade. Yet, contrary to the common Silk Road routes, these precious spices embarked on a maritime journey along an ancient Silk Road network. Weaving through port cities from Indonesia westward, tracing a path through India and the Arabian Peninsula, spices integral to Silk Road commerce weren't merely culinary delights. Their significance extended to religious ceremonies and medicinal applications. Unlike silk, which could be produced wherever silkworms thrived, spices emerged from plants that flourished exclusively in distinct environments. Wan sheds light on the uniqueness of spice origins, stating, that means there's a clearer origin for spice than for some of the other luxury items, which adds to their value. This clarity not only heightened their culinary appeal, but also added layers of significance to their role in religious practices and medicinal uses along the vast Silk Road. Important history of jade trade on the ancient Silk Road long before the famous Silk Road came into existence. China engaged in vibrant trade with its western neighbors through what is now known as the Jade Road. Jade, a mesmerizing crystalline green gemstone, held profound significance in Chinese ritual culture. In the 5th millennium BC2, when jade supplies dwindled, China found itself compelled to establish trade connections with western counterparts. Such as the ancient Iranian kingdom, the rivers of Khotan were teeming with nephrite jade the ideal variety for crafting intricate figurines and jewelry. This marked the inception of a flourishing jade trade between China and its Western neighbors during the Silk Road era, a period that also witnessed the exchange of other semi-precious gems like pearls. The Exchange of Glassware on the Silk Road Contrary to the common belief that Silk Road trade primarily flowed from the Far East to the Mediterranean in Europe, the reality is more dynamic. Archaeological discoveries in burial mounds across China, Korea, Thailand, and the Philippines have unveiled a surprising connection. Roman glassware among the prized possessions of the Asian elite. The unique soda lime glass crafted in Rome, transformed into elegant vases and goblets, became a coveted commodity. This distinct glass was eagerly traded for silk, reflecting the Romans' insatiable fascination with the luxurious fabric. An important history of the first trade on the ancient Silk Road. The expanse of Taiga, an evergreen forest spanning Siberia and Eurasia and extending into Canada and North America, played a pivotal role in Silk Road commerce. 
Traversing this vast region were resilient trappers, harvesting pelts of fox, sable, mink, beaver, and ermine, referred to as the Fur Road. This northern route supplied opulent coats and hats to Chinese dynasties and elites across Eurasia. Genghis Khan, in one of his earliest political moves, solidified an alliance through the gift of a sable coat. As the Silk Road neared its decline in the 17th century, rulers of the Chinese Qing dynasty could readily procure furs from Siberian trappers. The Tragic Trade of Slaves Along the Silk Road A somber reality of Silk Road commerce was the widespread trade in enslaved individuals. Raiding armies would capture people, Gira, selling them to private traders who, in turn, found buyers in distant ports and capitals, from Dublin in the west to Shandong in eastern China, as noted by Silk Road historian Susan Whitfield. These unfortunate souls became servants, entertainers, and eunuchs in royal courts. While acknowledging the pervasive nature of enslavement in pre-modern Eurasia along the Silk Road, scholar Wen emphasizes a crucial distinction. Unlike the African slave trade in the New World, none of the kingdoms or societies along the Silk Road could be strictly classified as slave-based. Instead, slaves were more akin to ornaments in the lives of the Silk Road elite, rather than constituting a major economic source, as one aptly points out.